When it comes to V8 engines, we only think of the big powerhouses. Yes, the golden muscle car era has treated us to some incredible V8 motors over the years. From the Hemi 426 by Chrysler to Chevy's LS6454, or even the 455 high output V8 by Pontiac, there are a lot of these bad boys around. However, with the dominant performance of some of these V8 engines during the original muscle era, many good V8 engines have also fallen through the cracks. Some, understandably, because they were just not good enough, but many packed a lot of punch yet remained relatively unknown because they share the same name with some performance monsters with bigger displacement. In this video, we will discuss our five best unknown V8 engines from the muscle car era. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. In the fifth spot, we have the 1964 Ford V8289 High Power K Code. Compared to other engines in this video, the Ford V8289 High Power, or the K Code for short, is relatively well known. However, being in the same family as the Ford 429, the Boss 302, and even the 428 means the K code never got the recognition it deserved. The 289 high power was launched in 1963 as the performance variant of the original Ford 289 engine found in the Fairlane nameplate. Interestingly, the K code never appeared in a Fairlane. Instead, the engine was available as an option for Mustang cars. Designed as a performance model, the K-Code featured thicker main bearing caps, a hotter cam, a big Autolite carburetor, and performance combustion chambers compared to the original 289. The engine produced 271 horsepower, which in 1964 was pretty impressive. In 1965, Carroll Shelby showed the untapped potential of the K-Code. With his reputation for turning Chevrolet cars into a performance beast, Shelby fine-tuned the 1964 engine to produce over 300 horsepower. The modified engine received new exhaust headers, a 715 CFM Hollycarb, and an aluminum intake. Shelby Mustang GT from 1965 to 1967 and all Shelby Cobra 289 were powered by the engine. The 1966 Shelby Mustang GT350, for instance, could go from standstill to 60 miles per hour within 5.7 seconds. The car could also cover a quarter mile in under 14.5 seconds while moving at 98 miles per hour. By 1967, Shelby released a supercharged variant of the K-Code that churned out 390 horsepower. Today, classic muscle cars with any version of the 1964 Ford 289 high-power engine are now highly sought after by car collectors. Moving on, the Chrysler 340 V8 engine. The Chrysler 340 V8 engine made its debut in the 1968 Chrysler. The engine was around till 1973, although Chrysler made no special efforts to market it. At the time, the 426 Hemi was the undisputed king in the market. Every company wanted to beat the 426 and worked towards doing that. The 340 V8 engine was an eight-cylinder engine that received several performance components. It featured a four-barrel carburetor, a dual-plane intake manifold supplying high-flow heads, and a high-rise platform. On release, the engine pumped out 275 horsepower, but real-life tests showed the engine had a gross power output of just over 300 horsepower. Due to the lightweight construction of the 340, cars equipped with the 340 delivered a better quarter-mile time than some heavier 440 big-block V8 engine. This level of performance was maintained until 1971, when Chrysler decided to make some changes. In the 1972 and 1973 models, Ford detuned the engines so that the cars it powered could operate without unleaded fuel. This led to a performance drop, resulting in a net 240 horsepower output. For an engine already struggling to match the performance of other Mopars in the Chrysler LAV8 series, detuning it for newer models was just a terrible decision. Holding down the third spot is the Pontiac 350 high output. Alongside Oldsmobile, Pontiac often receives credit for fueling the insane muscle car era craze in the 1960s. Pontiac was largely considered General Motors' performance division in the 1990s, and it was one of the biggest brands in the muscle car market for good reason. Massive V8 engines from Pontiac like the 389, the 455 high output, and the Tri-Power 389 generally get raving reviews for their monster performances. The implication is there are so many forgotten V8 engines from the brand that deserve more respect. A good example is the Pontiac 350 high output. Perhaps sharing a name with the majestic 455HO was not the best marketing idea, 
The 350 high output made its debut in 1968 as the performance variant of the original 350. Pontiac marketed it as the replacement for the old 326 V8 engine. On the original 350, customers could choose between a two or four barrel carburetor. Both options, however, could not match the performance of the 350 HO. The 350 high output engine, or 350 HO for short, was only offered in a few Pontiac models, such as the Firebird and Pontiac Lemons. The 1968 model of the engine featured a higher compression intake from the 400 V8 engine the model also got a Rochester Quadrajet four-barrel carburetor and could produce an impressive 320 gross horsepower. Pontiac further improved the power output in the 1969 model by making subtle performance changes, including adding a new camshaft from the Ram Air 3400. For our top two, we have the Chevy L79 327 engine. The Chevrolet L79 327 is another forgotten V8 engine from the muscle car golden era. Although muscle car collectors and gearheads have started collecting cars with this engine in recent times, the small block engine never got the credit it deserved back in its time. Chevrolet produced different models of the L79 327 engine from 1965 to 1968. On paper, the L79 never looked like much, but in real-life tests, the performance was terrific. The 327 V8 engine powered many Chevy cars from 1965 to 1968. Even some models of the popular Chevy Corvette nameplate had the engine, although it was never the main option for those Corvettes. Chevy's poor marketing strategy was one of the main reasons the Chevrolet L79 327 engine fell off the radar. The company treated the L79 engine as an upgrade to the 327 V8 engine, even though it delivered performances that rivaled the big block L78 396 in the Chevy Chevelle SS. The engine could produce over 350 horsepower despite having a factory power rating of 325 ponies. The L79 featured a high-performance hydraulic camshaft, a 600 CFM Holley four-barrel carburetor, and high-compression pistons. By 1968, Chevy replaced the Holley carburetor with a 750 CFM Rochester Quadrajet four-barrel carburetor, which significantly improved airflow and power. Cars equipped with the upgraded engine could blitz through quarter mile within 14 seconds. The Chevelle SS was also one of the cars that had the L79 327 as an engine option, making it an affordable and attractive buy for people who can't afford an expensive muscle car. The engine was also easy to modify in auto shops for those looking to boost performance. And finally, the Oldsmobile Ramrod W31 350. Of course, for a brand that gained so much prestige in the golden muscle car era, this video wouldn't be complete without an Oldsmobile engine. The thing is, Oldsmobile gained popularity for introducing high-performance big-block V8s like the 455 cubic inch engines. The small-block V8, on the other hand, rarely got the spotlight. For the most part, Oldsmobile only equipped the small-block engines in their pedestrian cars. The 350 cubic inch engine or ramrod 350 w31 introduced in 1968 is a good example of oldsmobile small block engines that performed well but never got their deserved recognition the ramrod w31 was exclusively available in the oldsmobile f85 ch and cutlass models between 1968 through 1970 and could generate over 325 horsepower Unfortunately, these cars never generated enough sales, mostly because of their design. The 1968 Cutlass equipped with the W31 engine, for example, looked plain and cheap compared to the 442 Cutlass model released the same year. The company stepped up their design game in 1970, but better alternatives on the market made the W31 less attractive. Every model of the Ramrod W31 featured a Ram Air induction, twin hood scoops, and a high-performance camshaft, among others. The W31 V8 engines also used a Rochester Quadrajet four-barrel carburetor, although some models featured air inlets for better airflow. From the late 1950s to early 1970s, before the oil crisis, the type of V8 engine in a muscle car single-handedly decided if the car would generate lots of sales or not. And while Cadillac was the first automaker to mass-produce a V8 engine in 1914, it wasn't until the muscle car era we got true flagship performances from the engines. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss our next upload.